You're watching HCAM TV. Terry. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic and so looking forward to tonight's dinner. Oh, ho, ho. should be a lot of fun <laughs> as we delve into a mob dinner. So as you can see, I have some mob paraphernalia here on the counter. We have the Sopranos cookbook. We have Godfather paraphernalia. We don't have just one, but two versions of gaudy movies. We have, of course, Donnie Brasco. <laughs> and over here, Goodfellas. And um, another cookbook and another Godfather book down below. And I don't know if you can notice this little picture over here. But this little picture is of Chelsea and me in Sicily in the cafe that Michael Corleone came, happened upon after seeing Apollonia, and it was Apollonia's father's cafe. And uh, so we were able to do a little uh, photo, guns included, shotguns, so that was, that was pretty good. And here I am, right, with my high hair and my bling, because, you know, what uh, mob girl didn't have all of that, right? Absolutely. And I can't tell if I'm like from the 80s throwback or if I'm a friend of um, Carmela Soprano, Kay Corleone, uh, Vicky Gaudi, um, whatever, you know, you, you get the picture, right? <laughs> it looks fantastic. I went for the high hair today, too, but that's the most okay. I could get. That's, that's well, all I could it do. It looks good, and I love your background. <laughs> Yeah, I feed you know, mob dinner. What's better than a mob restaurant to be yep. sitting in? There you go. Just make this. sure your back is facing the it's to the wall. Yeah, I'm looking at that entrance. My back is to the wall. No one's coming behind me. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds nice and safe. So, what's on the menu tonight? You might be asking. We're going to have an orange and fennel salad, the stecca pizziola, which is steak pizza maker style. We're going to have scroll with garlic, which is sauteed escarole. And then we're going to finish it off with amaretti, which is almond macaroons. Sound good? Ah, forget about it. <laughs> just forget about it. So I guess we're going to uh, just forget about it. <laughs> so we're going to start with the almond macaroons because of course they're going to have to cook and then cool down. So what I have here is um, candy cherries, red and green. I have eight ounces of almond paste. I have a cup of sugar and I have two large egg whites at room temperature. And what we're gonna do, how we're gonna start this is we're going to put the paste, and the paste can be a little, you know, difficult. Now this is at room temperature too, but it's thick. So you wanna make sure you kind of break it up and chop it up so that when it goes through the blades, it's going to blend nicely. And we're gonna put the sugar in, and I might have to be opening it to get it going. We all know baking's not my forte, but you do have to give me A for effort, right? Absolutely, you always seem to make it work. Sorry? You always seem to make it work. Yeah, yeah and it's like, if you can read, you can cook, right? Okay, so I'm gonna process this and I tend to do that and 
that will mix it up again. And I can feel it. It's starting to pick up the almond paste. And I want to open this and make sure that, oh, this is now. I'm not a baker, but let me tell you, this feels really good. And it's coming along quite nicely. So I'm going to put this back on. And then what you're going to do, you're going to get it going. And you're going to add the egg whites a little bit at a time. Now it's really making a nice dough. Really nice. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think we have a dough. So I'm going to get rid of this. But what I have here is a baking sheet with parchment paper. Now, you have to take about a tablespoon, make it a little ball, put it on the parchment paper, okay? And you want to put them about an inch apart, okay? Now again, I hope these come out good. Can't really tell for sure because again, you know, I'm really not a baker. But I give it a good go and I follow the recipe. So when I throw them in the oven, they should bake. They, they should come out pretty nice. Now this almond paste, you can make a lot of things with it. You can make marzipan, you can make biscotti, which is the twice baked cookies. And again, little drops. And I think what I'm gonna do, bear with me, I'm gonna Use a spoon, and I think the spoon is going to work better for me. And it does. So I'm saying just a little bit of trial and error for me. Because again, it's it's not my forte, but you gotta give me A for effort. So I give it a go. And that's the wonderful thing about cooking. If you feel you are not sure about doing something, try it. Because trial and error, right? That's it. These are coming along nicely. And who doesn't like macaroons, almond cookies, right? You can see you can see them having some anisette or some galliano after dinner munching on one of these. I agree with you what you're saying, how, how it's all trial and error, because during my time in quarantine, I started doing some baking, making cookies, brownies, uh, cornbread, and so forth. And I noticed that if I don't like the way it came out the first time, you know, add to the recipe a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that. And then the next time, oh, that's even better. And then, you, you know, you find out what it, oh, I cooked it too much or maybe 10 degrees less on the oven, something like that. Because, you know, cooking at your house is different from cooking from mine. You cook That's with electric, right. you cook with electric, I cook with gas, two different things. So you, you have to make it work. And, and let me tell you something. My mother wasn't a pro the first time she baked. <laughs> you know, it, it all was, again, trial and error. Yeah, now baking is funny because baking is supposed to be precise, but you know, sometimes it's not, and sometimes that's what you have to do. So what you want to do is you want to take a cherry and push it into the center. That kind of spreads it out. Yep. And it's very messy, but that's okay, right? So that it's almost like making an Italian stick-a-doodle. 
Yeah. Those those little cookies that has the uh, uh, Hershey's Kiss in the middle. <laughs> yes, exactly. And these look pretty good, right? Absolutely. I nice mean, Italian colors there, the red, white, and green. That's right. That's right. And then... Now, have you ever made these before like this, or is this your first time? This is my first time. There you go. But you know me, um, I'm game for anything, right? That's it. I'm just gonna wash my hands because they're rather sticky. And then I'll pop these in the oven. And the oven's already preheated? Yep, preheated to 350. And here you go. Aren't they cute? Adorable. Adorable. So I'm going to put them in. I'm going to set the timer. Now the recipe says eight, it says 20, but I'm going to put it at 18 so that, um, you know, they won't be too browned. And I do have to mention, um, these carnations, <laughs> this is the third show. Those carnations have showed up. They're still, yeah, they're still there. And they have lasted forever, I have to tell you. So, um, so that's why you keep seeing them. They are real flowers and uh, <laughs> you change the water and they're good to go. So, so that's good. Let me uh, get rid of these. I'm going to put this over here. And then I want to bring out the main ingredient, steak, pizziola, bistecca pizziola, which is again, steak pizza maker style. Now, what that means is pizza originated in Naples around the 1800s. And back then it was just dough and simple sauce, just tomatoes, garlic, and either basil, oregano, or both. Mm -hmm. And that's all it was. That was in Naples. That's of course my father's side, Sicily, my mother's side. And what they did, this is where this recipe originated. They would take a tough piece of meat they would make this very simple sauce, simmer the sauce for 20, first actually ground the meat, then take it out of the pan and make the sauce, the simple sauce. And once you simmer that for 20 minutes, you put the steak back in so that the sauce actually grazes the meat and makes it nice and tender. Mm. Now this is a um, top loin, so it's, it's pretty good steak but you could use chuck steak or shoulder or any kind of tougher meat and cook it in this sauce. So what I'm gonna do is bring this over to the stove. I'm going to heat up the pan with about maybe three tablespoons of olive oil, get a nice coating. Okay, let that heat up. And then we're going to saute the steak. And we're going to brown the steak maybe three, four minutes to each side. And you're not going to um, disturb it while it's browning. So, what are the it's ingredients there. that you'll be using uh, for this? Well, what are the ingredients will, will you be using with this? So the sauce, I have one 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes. Now these tomatoes, you can use dice, but I like the whole so that I break it up in the pan and you can get a nice chunk with your serving. I have um, garlic, I have uh, red pepper flakes and the oregano. Now, I'm going to wait for this heat up. Okay, that's, that's getting there. Now this is an in 
giving you the recipe, but you know me. I like my wine. I like my dry wine. This is a combination of Saint-Saint-Louis, Cabernet, Sauvignon, and Merlot. So it's a nice blend, and it's somewhat dry. Look at this. Oh, that's <laughs> it's the easiest. Twist off. That's nice so and easy. <laughs> you can take it on a picnic. You don't even need uh, a corkscrew. But once I get the sauce going, I'm going to add some wine to it because I like adding wine. It just really elevates the recipe, the sauce, the taste. It just gives it um, a, a nice different taste to it. So you won't see it on the recipe up there, but um, always feel free to add it. So I'm going to add the steak. Perfect. Okay. That'll take a little bit. So, so that, you're nice. going to sear that? You're going to get that nice and seared? Yep, each side. Yep. And, um, and then I'm going to remove that, set it off to the side, and then I'm going to add the ingredients for the sauce. Excellent. And then I'll let that simmer. And then it'll be on to the escarole. I want to put the light on the stove so I can take a look at the cookies. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they're flattening out. Perfect. So they're actually looking like cookies. Now, you know me, right? How excited I get when <laughs> I do any baking and it resembles a dessert. <laughs> That so, is awesome. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. And this, oh yeah, we don't want to touch it. What did I just say? Don't touch, Wait. don't touch. So, so yeah, we've got some good movies over here, right? Which, do you have a favorite out of yours, out of all those? You know, I love them all. And I cannot tell you whenever... I'm doing projects around the house. You can put one of these movies on and you don't even have to watch it. <laughs> All you have to do is hear it. You know what scene it is, what they're right. doing, what's coming up. Um, so I like that. And, right. um, and I love the cookbooks. Now this Sopranos cookbook, I don't know if you know how many of you out there were into the Sopranos. But, you know, it was a great series. They had their really off seasons where I was like, oh, you know, what are they doing this season? But for the most part, it was pretty good. And this cookbook, it goes into every character, recipes, stories, and it's the recipes of the characters. It's, it's not the, um, you know, the actors. Right, right. So that's a pretty good, good cookbook. And then this other one over here, um, the Mafia cookbook, it's a uh, Joe Dogs Iannuzzi. That cookbook, he was a real mobster and his stories, um, every chapter is a menu with the story behind the menu. So it's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, well, my, my favorite uh, cooking scene in Goodfellas is when he's in the prison. I'm trying to remember his name. And he's slicing the garlic with a razor blade because <laughs> he likes it nice and thin. Very it looked like it would probably take him all day to do one clove, but it was just yep. the precision that went into his food. And this is the kind of precision that goes into a lot of Italian recipes is that kind of precision. And they, of course, <laughs> you know, emphasized with that scene about how the reasons behind cutting the garlic with the razor and making it so nice. Now, growing up at my house, my grandmother was famous for large chunks of garlic and everything, including the meatballs. Now, the meatballs okay. used to be as big as our fist yes. with big chunks of garlic. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then when you ate that garlic, it was so sweet, so wonderful. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, I hear you. I really do. <laughs> um, this is good. Here's a little tip about uh, cooking steak. When you're doing it like this, you can look and you can actually, the thickness of the steak, you can see the doneness as it starts climbing up. So sure. you don't want, uh, obviously you don't want it to go all the way up. You cook it right through before you flip it. Sure. I'm going to flip it, and that's good. Definitely brown. I'm going to brown that side. I'll leave that for a bit, and then I will... Um... Yeah, so explain the method, the technique that you're going to do with the sauce. Sorry? You're, can you explain the technique of how you're going to do the sauce? Yeah. Yep. So what you're going to do, you're going to start off with, again, you'll have the bits in the pan from the steak. Sure. But you're going to add a little more olive oil. You're going to saute the garlic with the red pepper flakes. And you're going to get those nice and soft. Then you'll add your oregano. And again, if you want to do basil or both, up to you. And then you put the uh, tomatoes in. Now, what I did with the tomatoes, I did not drain them because I want that liquid. Right. I want to make a, a nice, light sauce. Because it will reduce with the cooking as it simmers. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. And the cookies. <laughs> so all the... All the thickness is going to be from reduction. It's not, you're not going to be adding any paste. I'm sorry. So all the all the thickness from the sauce yeah. will be from the reduction and not exactly. adding paste. The rendering down. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the wine's going to give it a nice little um, taste. Right. To it. And, and the garlic and as everybody knows that. When you're cooking with wine, there's no alcohol left. You cook that away because you don't want the alcohol in there. You want That's the flavor. Right. That's right. The alcohol burns off and you're left with that wonderful taste of the grapes and the blend of um, whatever was in the wine. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That I can imagine. That's the only part that I hate about doing these shows remotely is I can't smell the food. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, that'll change soon. Soon you'll be able to come over and uh, and do the filming. That's right. Can't wait. So I'm going to remove. Now you can see the steak is starting to come. Sorry about the phone again. <laughs> But you can see the steak was nice and brown. Can you see yep. that? Yep, nice and brown. Okay. And you know what? I don't have to add any more olive oil. I have Can you, can you explain why you do not brown garlic? Well, you can, but you don't want burnt garlic. Right. It just keeps it um, nice and fragrant and soft. Okay, so that's in there. Um, I'll let that cook for a couple of minutes. I 
turn down the heat a little bit. I'm going to add the oregano. And I'll get that. And of course, while I'm stirring this, I'm stirring up the bits, the brown bits from the steak, and that will flavor the sauce as well. Okay. That's all right. Smells good, so I'm going to add my tomatoes. You can hear that sizzle. Okay. And, oh, and then while they're in the pan, I just take a spoon and kind of smash the whole tomatoes. And, you know, you can see them here. And just to break them up a bit. And as they cook, you'll be able to break them up a little bit better, a little bit more. And you want to mix everything. Make sure that they're all kind of broken up a little bit. Whew. And I gotta take these out right now. Look at these. Wow. Whoa. That's the way I expect them to look. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. I'll leave those right there. Okay. I'll shake the onion and onion off. <laughs> Oven off. I'm going to get the olive oil going in the pan for my escarole. And again, a couple of tablespoons. I'll turn that on. Turn that on medium high heat. And then I just want to make sure I get back to this a little bit. <laughs> And I want to add a little bit of wine to the sauce. Maybe a couple of tablespoons. Now, could you do the wine before you add the tomatoes? Nope. No? Nope. Excellent. And I'm really not sure if, if it even matters, Mike. But it's going to help with the rendering and flavor. So, okay, now I'm going to let this go for about 20 minutes and then we'll be able to put the steak back in once that renders down a bit. We've got the cookies cooling, which is nice. I've got the olive oil heated for my escarole. And what I have here is a head of escarole, three garlic cloves chopped, and again, a pinch of red pepper flakes, or as Lefty says in Donnie Brasco, a punch. Give it a punch of garlic, a punch of red pepper flakes. So what's the difference between a pinch and a punch? A little bit more. Punch is a little bit more. So this is a little in between. <laughs> so I'm going to put the garlic in and get a spoon. Got the garlic here. And then add the red pepper flakes. Now it's funny because it's just about the same ingredients, right? As the sauce, as the escarole. So you're going to have that little kick to the meal tonight. And actually, the salad too, that'll be coming up. We'll, uh, we'll see where the kick comes from that. Now, I'll let this go for a little bit. But the extra roll, when you wash it, 
You want to make sure that you wash every leaf individually because soil will settle within the plant, within the head. It's not as tight as iceberg or maybe even romaine that, um, you know, dirt doesn't really get in. So you want to make sure you wash them really good and then cut them into bite-sized pieces. So, I never, I never do that. I, yeah. I never do about the individual washing like that. That's amazing. Oh yeah, and uh, and if you didn't do it, you'd get a mouthful of sand, and you know, <laughs> like, um, you know, like when you're eating steamers, and that happens. I've had that happen. <laughs> and a way to avoid that, not that we're cooking steamers, but if you soak the steamers all day in water and keep changing the water, the cold water. The steamers drink the water and get rid That's of the, the sand. Yeah. So that if you do it even the day before, you literally can have like no sand in your steamers. Wow. And, uh, well, that's that's, a, a, that's a great tip. Yeah. Okay. So put these in. And these will wilt down themselves. So just gonna let that go. Almost like almost like spinach does. That's right. That's right. You just want to keep stirring and and breaking down the tomatoes. And again, you know, because they're whole, you're gonna get a really nice chunk of tomatoes in your serving which is nice, and they'll be nice and flavored. So we're going to keep that going. And going to keep a wash on this. And I think what I'm going to do is just cover that with a little tip. All right, I just want to repeat for our audience again. So I just want to repeat for our audience again. It's one escrow head, three garlic cloves yep. chopped, a pinch of red pepper yep. flakes or punch, and three yep. tablespoons of olive oil and some salt. Yes. That's it. Now the salt, I have sea salt. So I like sea salt. Sea salt is great, isn't it? It is awesome. Yeah. So uh, use a little, little bit of that. And it's funny. I don't know if you've noticed in my shows, but I don't cook with a lot of salt and pepper, and I think it's because. You know, and I love salt. I love salty things. But I think in a lot of cases, it takes away from the original recipe, the spices, you know? Right. So, so, so if, you're, if you have, like, say, seven or eight different spices in there, adding the salt could take away from one, two, or three of those spices that you, instead, of enhancing, right. instead of enhancing all the flavors, it could actually take away from some. That's right, and um, and if you're concerned about your health, your um, you know um, high blood pressure or or whatever, uh, water retention, salt can not be a good thing. So it's actually healthier not to cook with it. And I don't know if you if you've ever heard this before, but people that salt their food before tasting their food are known not to think about the decisions they're making. Right, right. It's it's almost like a, a habit or an addiction. I mean, I remember my, <laughs> my brother used to put salt on his blueberry muffins. He salted everything. He had, and it's like, you just get it. You don't even know where it came from, what they put on it, what it's baked with, whatever. And he just, they just start adding salt because they know they like salt. Yep, yep. 
Now, again, I love salt. There's nothing like salt on corn on the cob, um, baked potato, mashed potatoes, a good steak. Yeah. Uh, I, I love salt, so don't get me wrong. I'm not French, putting down salt. I would say the only two things that I add salt to ever would be French fries if they did not add it. And number two would be the corn on the cob, which I think is fantastic like that. Oh, yes. uh, I did try adding salt to watermelon, and it was very, very good. Well, and again, really yeah, that's the, flavor out. That, that's the sweet and the tartness of the salt, like uh, salted caramel candy bars, right? Yeah. It's I've had uh, chocolate-covered potato chips, and I'm there I'm like, like yeah. really? Who does that's that? Right. And it was like... Oh my God, why have I never had this before? Yep. Now you can see this. This is really wilting down, right? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to let this go. Now here's another thing about greens. This recipe doesn't call for it, but um, you can put vinegar in there too. Really? You know, like collard greens. Okay. Collard greens, when you do that, you've got the onions, the garlic, the olive oil, and the vinegar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's, that's Southern. They, uh, they do that a lot in Southern cooking. Okay. Along nicely. I think what I'm going to do, looking at the time, I'm going to put the steaks back in. Okay. And then this will start to braise itself. And I love this liquid from the steaks. So put that in there. Pour a little bit of the sauce on top of the steaks to get this going. Now this recipe, the steak pizzola, um, you might be asking yourself, where's the mozzarella? Well, again, um, back when this dish was created, even though it was in the pizza maker's style, um, again, the early pizza was just the sauce and the dough. Correct. And when you think about it, if you put mozzarella on the steak, wouldn't it be just steak parmigiana, right? Pretty much, I agree. Like chicken palm, eggplant palm, shrimp palm, it's all with that mozzarella. Now, so, on, a, on a dish like this, could you add like a little dry parmesan at the end before oh, you, you could, after you, you plate could. it? Absolutely. Yeah. And you can even do it with the mozzarella. And again, it would be like what we call pizza today, sure, right? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, what I want to do, okay, that's going, this is really looking good. The cookies are cooling down, so that's good. Let's go. Um, I could get my salad going, right? And now this salad I'm really interested in because I never, never had oranges in a salad before. So yeah, so this is this is an interesting dish um, because you have some different flavors going on. You've got your navel oranges, which are sweet. You've got your fennel which is like licorice. And you've got your red onion, which is tart. And then you have your black olives that are sliced. Um, and basically what you're gonna do is you're going to peel these navel oranges and they're beautiful. They're, they're a nice, beautiful size. You're gonna peel them and cut them crosswise so that you get these beautiful slices, right? These over here for a minute. And um, 
oranges and lemons are very plentiful in Italy, particularly in Sicily, along with the lemons, a lot of lemons in Sicily, and olives, a lot of olives. So this recipe is reminiscent of that, really. And mixing all these beautiful flavors together. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to put this together? You're going to alternate some fennel with the orange slices. And you're just going to go in the circle and add them, as you can see. And then you just keep going around, adding as you go. Make sure you get some nice amounts. And you can build it however you like. for a fact. She's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, this is nice. Coming along nicely. I'm going to take this off so we can breathe a bit. I don't know if you can see that. How nice. Very nice color. Okay. And how healthy is this, right? It's pretty healthy. Nice and light, healthy, good for you. And then you're going to take your onion and scatter it over the top. And you're going to use the whole amount. It's only a half an onion, thinly sliced. And then you're going to take your olives, which are sliced, and put that on top, scattered. Now, it's not pretty. Yeah, it's very lovely. And it's not your typical salad, which is nice. It's, it's different. It's a nice pick-me-up, and it's sweet and licorice -y. <laughs> And especially on a very warm night like tonight. Yes, and nice, cool tangy, salad. tangy from the um, from the red onion, and then you want to take your olive oil and drizzle that over the top, and that's going to give it a nice, nice flavor, and then a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna. Just put some in my hand, sprinkle that on the top, and there you have that. There it is. And the steak's looking good. And the escarole is looking real good. I'm going to turn that down. And then, going to, I think, plate the cookies. And <laughs> now, if this was my grandmother doing this, she would have had a nice doily for the plate. <laughs> Those little paper doilies like at the bakeries. Yes. 
Slice it up, put them on the thing, stick them in the oven, you're done. Perfect. Is that beautiful? Yeah, nice big tomatoes. Yeah, and that's what you want. Yes. And then the extra roll. And you saw that was a pretty big head of extra roll. Right. Um, you can see how well, that came down to really just about nothing. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is plate the escarole, and then I'll plate the steaks. Now this is beautiful. And this is a dish Anthony would be proud to eat on a Wednesday. <laughs> Even though no spaghetti. I was going to say, there's no pasta there. There's no Prince spaghetti for him to have. No, no spaghetti. But he'd still like it. He'd definitely like it. Okay. Put that on the plate. Beautiful. Good. Uh, so you see how fast this came together, right? Well, yeah, uh, for for a very fancy, which, which I would consider a fancy meal, again, it came in under an hour. <laughs> I know, truly. Which is which is great. And I, I was just thinking potato gnocchi. Oh, beautiful. I think that would go fantastic with that. Yep. And I wish you could smell the sauce. It is absolutely fragrant, wonderful. That wine really, really adds to it. And you've got that nice brown burgundy 
to it. Look at that, right? That's a perfect meal right there. How beautiful and healthy. It's so healthy. So even if even if you're working, you know, you can come home and, and prepare all this in under an hour. Nice conversation. How was your day? What did you do? Uh, how many people did you whack today? How many banks did you rob? Did you bring yeah, me home yeah. any more jewelry? <laughs> You know, and then you sit down with the family and eat. It's beautiful. Oh, no, that's outstanding. So a meal like this here, I don't think would you would you make something like this, uh, maybe not with as big as steaks, but would you make something like this for one of your gathering parties? Would you make a plate like that? Or would that or is this more for like a, a small dinner? Um, you know, Mike, you could. You could absolutely serve this. Um, God, you could serve this to a large crowd. You could serve it to a small gathering or your family because most people like steak. And here's the thing. If you were having a large gathering, <clears throat> you could do this. You could also have a selection of chicken, chicken breasts, and a nice fish, like a piece of beautiful cod, right? Um, so your guests would have a choice. A choice, sure. But the sauce would be the same. Right. And the side, and the salad, and the dessert. Now you could serve in a set or galliano along with it <clears throat> as a nice cordial. Yeah, I can, I can see the tall bottle of galliano coming out. I could. I can see, uh, I can hear the espresso maker going in the background too. Somebody has a nice cappuccino. Parents always had it. They had the Uzo, the Galliano. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that's exactly how I, I how I can see it. And of course, you know, it's like okay, just as soon as that last dish is off the table and it's wiped down, bam, here comes the next thing. No one, no one like waits. It's like. All right, we moved this in. And they want to, like, get out of the kitchen so they can, like, start cleaning the pots and pans so they move the desserts in as fast. And, of course, That's once right. those desserts come in, everyone surrounds the table. Absolutely. And the stories don't end. Never. The stories keep on. And it doesn't matter if you heard them ten times before because yeah. they're wonderful. Yeah, you, you kind of look forward to it, especially at a family event when you have someone brings the new girlfriend over, the new boyfriend over, and of course you got to hear the stories again because it's for that one person and it has to embarrass somebody. <laughs> the best stories, if somebody's not embarrassed by a story of parent or grandparents old, then oh, it wasn't a good God. time. It was <laughs> like a so mission. <laughs> it was like a mission to, that to is embarrass. So Absolutely. <laughs> no, that looks great. So we have oh, about I seven. It smells wonderful. I can't wait to dig in. So, as far as the uh, salad goes, I'm not an olive person. What could be an alternative to that salad? Where I personally don't like olives. Oh, now that's interesting because you've got the onions and you've got the uh, fennel, and if you okay. can't find fennel, use anise because they're in the same family, mm -hmm. the same bulb type. Yep, yep. Um, very interesting. You know what you could try? A tomato. Oh, okay. Nice little great tomatoes. Yeah, that I could do that. Work. Yeah, I've, it, you know, it's funny. Every Italian family that I visited Olive is in every single salad. It's yeah. just part of it. And I just, you know, I never say no, I just work around it. And maybe once in a while I'll get one, but I I personally don't make them with, with olives. And so an alter knowing that there is an alternative, you know, that's fantastic. Like going with the whole tomatoes in your sauce like that, I do the same thing too. Yeah. I, if I'm going to make a sauce like that and I'm going to render it down, I like using the big tomatoes. 
Now, so, now, if I'm making a sauce for a bunch of people, like when I'm cooking at the firehouse, I'll get, you know, just the kitchen ready crushed. And because I'm going to put a bunch of meat in there, what if I don't want room for all these big piece tomatoes? And I know the guys don't like them. So yeah. I, you, you got to be able to mix it up and be able to use all the difference, whether you get large diced, petite diced, Absolutely. half, halved, whole. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I love them. I love plum tomatoes. I love, I, oh, you give me the big, that, cause that's where it's fun. To, to, Absolutely. And it's, it's the perfect snack too. Oh, they're, they're so sweet. You just sit and, you know, they're, they're, they're a fruit, you know. They're not oh, I don't go in the summertime, constantly going over my grandmother's garden. Me and my friends would be out there and my grandmother used to leave a salt shake out on the picnic table. Because she would give us, she'd let us go in there and pick a tomato, and we had a little salt on it and just eat it there. It was outstanding. Yep. But that's, oh, that was nice. And that was with the old neighborhoods, too, where um, where the uh, yards were connected and everyone had a gate to each other's yard. Because if someone was away, they'd make sure they water each other's gardens or everything. It was real nice. Hey, we have a, a uh, something here from uh, John Ritz on YouTube. At a restaurant, adding salt or pepper before tasting could be considered an insult to the chef who carefully seasoned his, uh, the dishes in the kitchen. See, there you go. There you go. Thank you, John Ritz, who's watching. There you go. So, yes, and thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you said it. It's like, how do you know how it tastes? You know, because you taste it, oh, it could use a little more salt. You know, right. you can't say uh, that if you salt it ahead of time. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're ever at an interview out to dinner, and I've been on a few, don't ever do that because they'll think you don't think about things before making a decision. Right. There you go. Wow. Well, hopefully I don't have to do any more job interviews. I'm I know. Play. Same here. Hopefully I'm all done. <laughs> <laughs> Same right. here. So listen, we have two minutes left, and... Um, other than a delicious meal, again, that I don't get to taste. Hopefully, maybe next week as things light it up and uh, maybe I'll sneak by the kitchen window. But uh, this is uh, the end of July. You know, first day of summer was just the other day. And now we're getting into July. And uh, our next show is going to be July 1st. That's right. And it will be something to do with the holiday because we'll have the fourth coming up. Now, if you want to get a preview, go to the free for pontoon party on my webpage on hcam.tv, and you can see uh, where we had a pontoon party tool in the lake right before yep. the fourth. So a lot of good recipes there. If you go to a party, if not with these days. But I do want to take this time to again thank hcam. And uh, we love you guys. So here's to Asia. Thank you, Terry. We love you. And just to remind everybody at home that if you look down at this video at the bottom of the page in the description, the whole recipe with all the directions are on there. Uh, you go to hkim.tv slash the gathering and all the old shows are there and all the recipes. Uh, and matter of fact, I'm going to turn all these recipes you gave me into PDFs. I'm even going to put these recipes on that page as well. So visit the old shows. Check it all out. Terry, thank you. Good night. I love you. We will see you next week here on The Gathering. Love you guys. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>